This is Channel Attitude. Your voice. Your right. Your freedom. Oh shit! It's Vince Russo! Vince McMahon's best kept secret. I am the anti-Christ of professional wrestling. David O'Keefe can run the world title. I've got a wife, three kids at home, and I really don't need this shit. How can this show be so awful, Mr. McMahon? I didn't think it was. My anger on a pole match. And Hogan, you big bald son of a bitch, kiss my ass. Judy Bagwell on a forklift match. McMahon, the family, the rock, they screwed us all. Now you're the editor, right? Yes, I am. Jumpy, jumpy, uh, beep, beep. Goldberg steered Russo out of the cage. I'm from New York. I'll get down right nasty. This is Vince Russo's The Brand. Coma. How, 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 here, here we go again. What? How many times do I have to say when I say, here we you go, Al shuts up? Here. You How many times, bro? I said, here we go. I'm ready to hit the music and you talk again, bro. Yeah, that was a good line, though. Wasn't it, Jeff? That was a good one. <laughs> let me talk. Let me, let me tell everybody what's going on here. And let's be everybody on. knows I'm as honest as they come. Me and Al have known each other for a very long time. Yeah, we have. Al looks it, like you know what? days like this, it seems longer. Yeah, very much longer. <laughs> like Al looks really like shit. longer. Al looks like shit. I, I mean, I, I I'm not going to make excuses for the guy. <laughs> He gets paid very well. I'm tired. Look, can I finish, please? <laughs> All right. I'm tired. He gets very well. He gets paid very well to be on this show. And I need Al on this show to be bright eyed and bushy tailed. Al comes on weird. here today. He lo- <laughs> looks like he's three sheets to the wind in the bag. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Just. Pump the brakes, okay? How did the standard on this show suddenly go up? Used to, <laughs> Disco was in bed in his pajamas. <laughs> That's true. I'm at I least on That's every episode erect. I'm at least vulnerable. That's true. Okay. I'll give you that. You're not in bed. But I ask Al, because, you know, listen, the friend that I am, oh. right away, Al, are you sick? Uh, I'm concerned. You look like shit, Al. You look I- like, oh, well, yeah, Vince, uh, Times are rough. Uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm making this movie. I'm a big movie star now, man. I'm, I'm, I'm I gotta go to the set uh, all day on the set. Uh, then I gotta go do my my TV show that is in a hundred countries. Then after that, I gotta I gotta go back to the set. Oh, poor poor pitiful Al Snow, the movie star, got wor- working on the movie set. Why why do why does this show have to pay the price? It doesn't, and I, you know, um, it, it really, if I could, I'd like to put you in the trunk of a car and take you to one of those hundred countries that I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell a big movie star. I'll tell everybody you're working on a movie. You got to go to the set 18 hours a day. Go ahead, Al. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm working on a feature film called Unnatural. It is a Western, where, so I get to be a cowboy and ride horses, shoot guns, you know. Maybe we could go out for a little target practice, Vince. <laughs> hey, hey, Jeff, you know how we were talking yesterday about Nick Houseman, like you kept bringing up, like you know, be, being so full of himself now. Bro, you notice how Al said, I'm working on a, and his voice lowered a couple octaves too. I'm working on a featured film. Not I'm working on a film. I'm working, he's working, Jeff, on a featured film. Where Where is this film going to be featured, cowboy? God only knows. I hope it's <laughs> <laughs> probably probably in my living room. That's going to be about. <laughs> I'm not fooling myself. Uh, we'll, so we'll when, when, that remains to be seen. So when when does this film wrap? How 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 long are you working uh, on this film? I've only got about uh, another week, week and a half, I think, uh, for me. So, are, are you going to make it through this show? Oh, I'm going to make it through the show. Yeah, yeah. You have really, really <laughs> motivated me today. So, yeah. Oh, I'm wow, working on a feature and, film. Uh, if you saw the video of the most recent video that I sent you, which you probably don't because you don't check my the messages I sent you. You just, like, a, you're supposed to be a good friend. Like, oh, it's Al. And then priority. You know, the fo- bro, it, I can't I can't look at shit on the phone. I got to get an email. You could ask Jeff. I'm bad on the phone looking at stuff. You t- 
Okay, you know what? From now on, I'm going to email it to you, and then you can have another excuse. Yeah, please so, email it to me. Yeah, but I listen. I do want to apologize. Social. That's the problem. Yeah. You know? Listen, I want to apologize if you're watching this show and you are a blue collar worker like I, and you know who knows, but maybe you're on a garbage truck 18 you're, hours a you're day. A blue collar worker. Maybe you're a mechanic, you, bro. Greasy and dirty and sweaty. Forty. Maybe. Maybe you digging. Di- I know pots, bro. D- Jeff pots digs graves, bro. Pots digs graves. That's nuts. I want to apologize that you know, poor you don't Al. Even dig you. What was that? You literally don't even have a collar. I bet your hands are softer than butter. I want to apologize for those, you know, poor Al working on a featured film have while you, you guys are digging cool. ditches. Yeah, digging ditches. Uh, do, del- you ever even, do you even know what a shovel is? <laughs> All right, Jeff. Uh, what do, I don't what do, mean in the wrestling terms of take a shovel and bury somebody. I mean, do you even know how it operates? Do you know Jeff. what end to use to pick up dirt? Jeff. What do we got for you? Better speed this up before he falls asleep. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead, yeah. speed it up before he falls asleep, man. Well, that's every time we have a conversation, I usually do that with you. <laughs> you're, you're so charismatic. So start with that. I wanted to wah, 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 Speaking one of your things so bad yesterday. It was a conversation you had with your wife. What What was that? Yeah, that was hilarious. So she said, you're, you're doing nothing what are you doing? today? What are you doing? I said, nothing. She said, you, you didn't do it. You did nothing yesterday. I said, well, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to wah wah that right. so bad, bro. That's right. We played fart football in bed, and I got carried away and pooped. And she said, "What happened?" And I said, "Ah, it's, it's halftime. Change sides." <laughs> All right, uh, Jeff. Please, please. That what, is what, funny. What do you have for L? Please, Jeff. Enough. <laughs> it's funny, Jeff. It's funny. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got for L? Please, Jeff. Well, we know the Dirt Sheets have had their Vince McMahon narrative since he's come back because of their precious Triple H booking that they're afraid to lose. So I saw this headline when I was going through the stuff for the show. And I thought, well, this could be interesting. And then I read the article, and I'm like, I can't believe this is the headline. So I'm going to read you guys this article, and then I'm going to tell you what the headline is. So this is the article. Okay. It's about an interview with Nia Jax. And it says, plans in pro wrestling constantly change, with Vince McMahon being infamous for making late calls to tweak things. That's something fans often complain about during his time in charge of creative. And one of his last-minute tweaks benefited Nia Jax during uh, Survivor Series 2018. She ended up being the sole survivor. However, in an interview with Ring the Bell, she said she wasn't meant to be in that spot originally. She said, I believe it was supposed to be Sasha Banks. She was supposed to be the sole survivor that night. We were in rehearsals. It was before doors opened, and the producer came out and said, Vince changed it. Naya, over. Can I stop you for real quick? Sure. Vince, did you hear that? We were in rehearsals. When we were there, did did anybody rehearse anything? (laughs) Oh God! Well, I, bro, I could tell you this, Al. Yeah, they, they, the rehearsal thing started being a, a, a thing at TNA, like, yeah. And I, I hate re- like really, oh, bro. Rehearsals, absurd. absurd. Hate it. Yeah, but but at sure. WWE, never, never yeah, was that word used. Never. No. Go no. ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, there, Jeff. So she went on to talk about how she had that where she accidentally broke Becky Lynch's nose when she was all bloody. That scene in the ring from that year. And Naya said, it was the moment I was still trending and the crowd hated me and they went nuts when I came out. So Vince was like, no, Naya over. Okay. That's the article. The headline. Yeah. Vince McMahon took big win away from Sasha Banks to troll WWE fans. As if it was just recently done. Well, they, they put in 2018, but still where, where, Anywhere in that article, where did Nia Jax say that this was to troll the fans? No, Vince. Vince was probably, bro, probably smartened up by I, I would guess Bruce of how much heat Nia was getting, you know, on, on on the internet and social media for breaking Becky's nose, and Bruce probably suggested. We should probably ride this wave. And yeah. Vince made the change, which, Al, sounds like a good change to me. Absolutely. And, and, and that does happen and has happened. 
in every company, uh, you always cap, you always try to catch lightning in a bottle, and you're hoping that using that already uh, natural heat that the girl has when you know before you even start trying to put heat on her, uh, you know, it, it will just make it even that much easier to really build to a money drawing match between Naya and. Becky Lynch, you know, you just take what's there. Uh, because again, you know, I always quote Jerry Jarrett, you got to tell a little bit of the truth to make someone believe a lie, you know, and the truth was always already there. The vast majority of that audience, or at least a portion of the audience, um, already knew and had heat on Nia Jax uh, for her accidentally breaking Becky Lynch's nose. Now, if we make her the sole survivor, then we start building to a match between Naya and Becky that might not happen for two or three months. Well, that's that you just capitalize on what's there in the moment, you know. Oh, Vince, please turn that off. Yeah, my, how, that's how, that's rude, how, rude, how rude is that? Really? <laughs> I mean, right in the middle. How of do you know that was me and not Jeff? How do you know that? How do you know that's me, not Jeff? You're constantly complaining about the fact of professionalism, and next thing I know, you've got your phone on. No, I mean, that's not really, my phone. That's an no. email coming through my computer. That's not my phone. Oh, that's right. I forgot because, you know, the only way to communicate with you is through an email on your Jeff, laptop. Jeff, you want to hear something scary? You, you, an AOL, you, was an AOL being, you know, was that an AOL? Though? That was. You're still on AOL. Yes, I am. You, yes. Do you still get the free CDs, you know? Yes, yes. Hey, Jeff, you want to hear something funny? Yeah. Do you know how... Al just uh, quoted there the, uh, you know, late, great uh, Jerry Jarrett that, you know, he learned that from. And that's a good, that's a good a, line, by the way. Yeah, it, it's, it, it works. I mean, it's true. He's, he was very wise. Do you know now, Jeff, I literally have to listen to, well, Al said from EC3 every week. So, like, <laughs> EC3 is now passing along Al Snow knowledge, the yeah. guy who's shitting in his bed, and oh, we gotta, we gotta switch sides. That that guy, hey, that guy, pretty, he's quoting, bro. That's pretty smart. That if I shit in bed, I convince my wife to change sides with me. That's pretty smart. <laughs> that's the new thing. Now we're quote, we're quoting Al Snow. Well, well, we're quoting Al Snow, bro. We've been, we've been quoting Al Snow for years. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's next? Well, Nick Khan. You don't, act like you don't use my jokes at parties and stuff. Well, <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't yeah I, I'm, I'm going to text my wife the one about, oh, yeah, yeah, hey, listen, I'm going to shit in the bed tonight, uh, but that's going to mean it's halftime. You got to go to the other side of the bed. I'm going to I'm gonna text her that, okay? Okay, I'm sure that's going to work. So. Yeah. All right, what's next, Jeff? Nick Khan did a couple of interviews this past week, and in the first one. Bro, he just did the, bro, you know what he just did? You see what he just did there? He just did the he holding in the yawn without opening the mouth. He just did that. Like I, I, I didn't see him just yawn with the money he's getting paid to do this show. We we all do that when you're talking. So, <laughs> oh, well, that, that that's unnecessary. That's totally uncalled. Even, even your wife. I mean, she just can't insult. Jump. Yeah, insults like that are totally, uh, totally uncalled for. All right, go ahead, Jeff Nick Khan. So he said, "Raw is the highest rated show on USA times three. And our belief is USA wants to keep it that way. For Fox, they want more live. You saw what they bid, did with the Big Ten. We think those are all good indicators for us. And then they talked about how WWE did the most sponsorship money they've ever done with the past WrestleMania. They did $20 million in sponsorship. Wow. And Khan said, our sales and sponsorship numbers should be far bigger than what they are. I agree. Jack yeah. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say that that's interesting that they did their record and he still thinks it should be far bigger. I mean, right. this guy has been successful wherever he's went. Vince, you theorized that Vince McMahon is playing the long game with getting him out of the company. No doubt. No after doubt. After he mind. voted, you know, allegedly on the board or whatever. I, that might not even be allegedly. That that's might not have alleged. Been confirmed, no, that's but, factual, bro. That's yeah. not alleged. But yeah. What do you, what do you think? That do you think there's a hidden meaning behind saying our sales and sponsorship numbers should be far bigger than what they are? Because he seems to be the one that gets all this stuff. Like yeah. maybe there's a roadblock preventing him from, no, from doing not. this or no, yeah, I agree one hundred percent with it. I mean it it 
it quite honestly is, that's the truth. I mean, think about it. Think about, uh, really, what other uh, live event, you know, uh, like WrestleMania, other than, I, and, you know, people are, you know, there are going to be some people, oh, oh, God, that's ridiculous. You know, how's comparing WrestleMania to the Super Bowl. Well, yeah, I am. They had 160,000 people over two days, you know, and, and, and what did they reach as far as an audience worldwide? You know, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And yet even the fans of wrestling continue to disparage the very form of entertainment that they so dearly love, you know, and, in you know, by all, you're going to compare it to the Super Bowl. Of course I am. Think about the numbers, not just in this past, you know, you, you just think about the numbers in this past year, not historically over decades, but just, just the past year. How many, how many live events, you know, does WWE run? Uh, how many people, thousands of people attend those live events? How many people, thousands of people each week attend two separate live events, a Monday, you know, Raw filming and a SmackDown filming each week? You know, those interactions uh, and the at-home audience and the worldwide audience, the numbers are insane. And even when, and Vince, I think you can attest, when we we were both there, the, the biggest advertisers, uh, you know, like Ford and Chevy and, you know, the really heavy hitters, the ones that really have the real marketing dollars, wouldn't advertise on it because it was wrestling. Mm -hmm. And... You know, they'll run to UFC, you know, um, because that's a respectable sport. But wrestling has been and always will be the red-headed stepchild of entertainment. It, it, it makes no sense based on money and business that WWE is not getting the exact time. I mean, case in point, uh, and really think about this. Who do you really think? has a bigger fan base, UFC or WWE? Really? And, yeah, and, I'll hold and, on. And I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, going to be devil's advocate for a second. UFC is valued at 12.6. WWE's was valued at 9.6. .6. You know. How could I be devil's advocate for that? Yeah. Because you, you know damn well this is what happens and the blame is on – I'm not going to say pro wrestling in general because, you know, o o o o OVW, uh, you know, you, you produce a different type of show, you know, Billy with NWA. I'm talking about the WWE. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about any other wrestling organization. Right. Here's, here, here's why they're their own worst enemy, Al. I, I'm sorry, bro, because even though when you look at it from a business point of view, dollars and cents, yes, bro, I agree with you. 1,000% it is right up there with UFC. However, those people... I, I those think it's beyond UFC. Beyond I mean, UFC. Okay, I'm not is. even going to argue with you. Here's the problem, though, bro. Those people making those decisions turn on the product. Yeah. And they turn on a product that at many, many, many times is laughable. That is why it's the red-headed stepchild, bro. That's on that's on the wrestling industry. That's not why. Yes, it is. It, this has been a prevalent uh, perception and conception by the general audience for decades. It has always been there. It has always been a second rate compared to roller derby type of sport. I disagree. After no, I'm telling now, you. When, let me tell you this. When I was, the, when I was, when it, listen, when I was the head writer of Raw, okay, and this is part of the reason why I left the WWE. When I was a head writer of Raw, the product was so hot at the time. Yes. That Fox came after me and I actually wrote a pilot for Fox that they paid me for because, because it was so hot at the time and it was the attitude era and it was Austin and rock and all that stuff. It's not, it's not that anymore, Al. I know that. And there, and there have always been, and will always be though when just like right now, there's, 
there are a lot of other television products projects that are out there that are are around or about wrestling involving wrestling because there's an audience i'm talking about the popular perception that wrestling is some kind of you know stepchild to everything else that with corporations and with executives to the point the best example that i can give you of that is wcw Vince bought WCW for a million dollars. And the only reason he bought WCW for a million dollars wasn't because WCW wasn't, you know, they were still drawing threes and fours at that time on, on TNT. He, they, he bought that because the executives of Time Warner literally stated that they didn't want something like wrestling on their network. They didn't want that lowbrow entertainment, and that's how it's perceived as lowbrow entertainment. Okay, why? What? Wh- wh- I want to hear your opinion of why it's the redheaded stepchild. Why? Because for a very long time, a very, and I can't emphasize that enough. It was always viewed as a pseudo sport, and everyone knew that it was predetermined, and felt like it was a con game like they were being lied to. And the one thing universally that no one likes is to be lied to. And, you know, it it doesn't happen as much, but boy, I'll tell you, especially like when, you know, I first broke into the business and, you know, in the 80s to between the 80s and I'd say even into the early 2000s, one of the most prevalent questions that would be asked by you know, fans of all walks of life, you know, is the, uh, you know, is, is wrestling fake, you know, uh, and they would really want you, when they asked that question, they were wanting you to give them an answer that allowed them to still believe to some degree. And, you know, it, it's always been thought of as the common man's entertainment that you, you have to be of a lower social economic standing to you know and that's where uh wrestling appeals to that just that audience you know um where the case is that's not true at all wrestling appeals to a, a very broad spectrum of an audience just like the big myth nowadays of oh they just market it to children it's only children that are coming to the building it's just children it, it no, nothing. I dare anyone who makes that statement to go and watch at any time. Pick a time period because it's on YouTube. You can just pick a time period and look at the audience. The vast majority of an audience, if there's a hundred percent of the people in the building, at least eighty-five to ninety percent of that is adults, and not just adults with children, but adults by themselves. And that has all. And even further back, when you go into the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, you go look at those shows, and even into the 80s, the the more of that audience consisted of adults. WWF started to market its merchandise to children in the 80s, yes, and they capitalized on that portion of the audience, but you know that they, you know, in during the Attitude Era, we purposely directed all of our content towards an adult audience between 18 and 34, because that's the majority of the audience. And that's why, and, and yet we always tell ourselves either it's lowbrow, you have to be of low socioeconomic standing to enjoy it, you've got to be a lack of it. To, you know, to find wrestling, you know, quality entertainment. Um, and that's the, you know, because still to the, you know, if, if I'm wearing a wrestling shirt and when I go to a social event, there's going to be somebody going, but you like wrestling, you know, that's fake. No, yeah, I, I'm sorry, see, I see, but Al, listen, man, come on. Into I watch it every week. And, it, it, that's, it that has nothing, the corporations, the executives don't watch it. That's the point. They don't watch it. So the quality of the show doesn't matter. What matters are the numbers and the people that it reaches. Would you agree with this statement? 
Would you agree with this statement? And we 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 watch, we see it every week on this show. Would you agree with this statement? You got to be in 2023. You got to be an absolute idiot, a mindless fool, if you believe if you watch wrestling and believe it's real. W- would you agree with that statement? I would believe. I would agree with that statement in the 80s. Well, I, I, I not not like it is today. In in my opinion, I know that that's not what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. I am saying that if you were don't get hot, don't get hot. If you were just, if you were just a corporate executive and you were wanting to advertise your product and you wanted to reach really, I agree. Consistently, on average, the largest yes, I agree. The largest audience that I agree. crosses all socioeconomic barriers, it crosses all age barriers, it it reaches more people regularly than anything else on TV. I mean, just the fact that on USA Network, it is the highest rated show, quoting Nick Khan, by three times anything else. Three times. But there are, there are higher dollar advertisers that are going to advertise on those other shows before they will advertise on that. And that's just, and listen, that is the perception because and I can prove it. That's why when you want, if you watch golf and God, I don't know why anybody would ever do that, but you watch golf, there's, there's advertisements for Cadillac and for Volvo and, you know, and, and tag your, and, you know, high end stuff because they're wanting to reach that audience. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but you're not going to see that kind of, you know, you're not going to see like, you know, uh, uh, even even you know beer commercials and etc. You know they 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 will not advertise on wrestling because you know it's like, bro, I got to explain something to you. You're gonna love it. And I I, I ju- I'm I'm just writing stuff down because based on what you said now, I got to ask you three different things. Oh god. Okay, Al. What Al said, I, I agree with Al one thousand percent. What he said. Let me I, clarify too because I'm there, I know somebody's gonna go. Oh, you're wrong because there were beer advertisements on there on that show. Yeah. That's because USA sold that one. Nick Khan's talking about advertisers that he get, he WWE gets. They can't walk into Budweiser and Budweiser will buy advertising time from WWE or be a part of WWE and sponsor an event or etc. They will with UFC. They won't with and you know. But now USA can say, hey, we've got. WWE and you know we got the show and it draws these ratings and Budweiser will spend the money. That's the difference. But USA gets the money if they get Budweiser to advertise the brawl. WWE doesn't because they're doing probably a, some kind of split. I'm going to tell you an interesting story, Al. That um uh, you don't know of. Then I got to I got to hit you with a couple things. Uh, num- um, during the Attitude Era. Yeah transitioning into the attitude era mm-hmm. um taste the rainbow was a sponsor right yeah uh, skittles okay. skittles taste the yeah, rainbow. i remember they brought out a big platter of skittles one time and i said yeah. they were better than drugs yeah. and then jr was like that was on commentary and jr was like, what, what were you thinking i was just trying to put the candy over <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway uh so not that i ate skittles and saw a rainbow but. so we start getting really heavy hardcore Attitude era. And, and and basically I said to Vince, bro, we can't we can't be having taste the rainbow when when Austin we, we Vince, you can't and bro, he he put the kibosh on it. Then Al, this was the funny thing, funniest thing in the world. He made me the watchdog. So I would have to go to all the licensing meetings. When all the pro they would try and remember, bro, it, it was Jim Bell and yeah. some big heavy set. And remember, bro, yeah. they they got caught embezzling money from yeah. it. You remember that whole thing? So, yeah. bro, it was Jim Bell and some real heavy set guys. So, Jeff, they would take money from anybody. Yeah. Yeah, so I would have to sit there. So uh, I'll never forget this one. First of all, I said, "Okay, guys, we got we got to ex the Stone Cold Steve Austin lollipops like that. That 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 is not happening." <laughs> Al, they tried to sell me on a Stone Cold C- Steve Austin slip and slide. Okay, and I'm like, I'm trying to convince me out. It, it wasn't for kids. 
It was it was for college students. For college students. Al, a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Uh, now, that, that, I'll that, I'll slip and slide. That, yes, you know. there you go. Al, do you remember Bob Collins? Yes, I remember. Bro, that, bro you, know, you know what's amazing to me? I'll see people don't understand this. Bob Collins was the nicest, sweetest man. Oh. So eccentric. Really, yeah, he, he really was. Was, was the so bro, bro, he bro, he wore pajamas in his office. I walked in his yeah. office several times, he was in his pajamas. But what's amazing to me is I thought of Bob Collins because bro, that was the guy that used to promote WrestleMania. Look, look, look at how freaking far yeah. that is coming. Th- is that not amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Al, also, I want to hit you. I, I want to because I know you're a historian and you know all this shit. So please help me with this. Okay. Al, I remember in in the 70s on a UHF station, uh-huh. I used to catch this wrestling from Mexico. I think you need to explain that to the audience. What UHF? <laughs> so there were, okay, well, there back, were UHF back. and VHF. And that was ultra high frequency and very high frequency. Yeah, actually, 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 Al, there there were five channels, ABC, NBC, CBX, Channel 9, WOR, and Channel 11, WPIX. And then you had had you you had two. Okay, yeah, Yeah. bro, in Evansville, Indiana, I think there was three. So um, UHF, you go to a higher frequency and you can catch this local stuff and crazy stuff. Al, there was a wrestling show in the 70s that came out of Mexico, and it was over-the-top characters like clowns and all this shit, and the audience was just kids. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Vaguely, yeah. Yeah, it was just kids. It It was almost like Bozo. But it was these wrestlers were were made just for kids, and there wasn't one adult in the audience. Yeah, and it failed. It, yeah, it yeah failed. I remember. I remember. I do remember because it was uh, they they thought that they could appeal just to the to the kid audience, and it it you know it, it didn't work. I yeah, mean, yeah. But I mean, I remember. I got to do some research. I got. I, I bet you. I bet you Conan might know a little something about that. I'm, I'm going to ask. Probably does. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's uh, what's next, Jeff? Well, I just wanted to say, because I see what Al is saying from a fan's perspective as a college student during the Attitude Era, because and people my age listening to this, we were in college at a very unique time as it pertained to the wrestling industry. When I was in college, the Attitude Era, when you guys were there, was smoking hot all over campus. Right. WWF shirts everywhere. Monday night, pay-per-view nights, dorm room parties people did not go to the bar on monday night till raw ended girls dorm rooms watching raw it was everywhere every there was nobody was going up to people saying all that crap is fake at that point in time but if you watch tv lowbrow humor all the shows taking shots at wwe um you know the parents television council they had that one report on nbc how many middle fingers were thrown on raw and and all in in the sexual stuff so even though it was popular amongst young kids and college students and everybody was watching it whether you have been a wrestling fan or not the corporations still seem to be taking their shots and and trying to get that it's low brow the media the media were the media always it's always that and it's a prevalent perception that has always been hanging over wrestling that it is low brow uh, carny entertainment and it's either only directed at children because that's obviously they're the only ones that would ever believe enough to be entertained by it you know or it's to the person who's basically you know uh down you know literally living in a trailer in the backwoods eating food dog food out of a can because again they're the only ones that would be foolish enough to buy into and believe that this is a real sport you know, and those, even in the 80s, uh, even though we still, you know, I honestly, and, and a lot of people won't understand this statement, um, even in the 60s and the 70s, and, you know, and I, I've said this, I cannot, honestly, I cannot say this enough. In 1976, I, I, you know, I can't remember years, but I do remember this because I was like 12 or 13 years old in 1976. Okay. 
And that was where I really, I started making the decision. That was what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be, which, you know, clearly that worked out, but uh, I wanted to be a professional wrestler. So I, both, both sides of my family, my mother's side, my father's side, you know, I made everybody aware that's what I wanted to be, you know, and they all thought it was a joke. And every one of them, and I do mean every one of them, why? Why do you want to do that? That's fake. Now, let me point out, not one of them, not my grand, neither one of my grandmothers, my grandfather, n- nobody had ever been a professional wrestler. Okay. How did every one of them have that insight to, without question, unequivocally tell me, why do you want to do that? That's fake. Everyone has known, and and it's always been kind of there in the room. It just, we went out of our way to allow an audience to be able to just believe. Again, I can't emphasize that enough. That's, That's no different than going to watch a movie, and in the movie, you've got people explaining what's happening or breaking the fourth wall constantly, to expose the fact that you're in a movie watching it. It, 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 you're, You're not dumb for believing that it's real. You're just simply being getting, allowing yourself to be swept up in and be taken into the story that you're watching and enjoy it for what it is. But that because of that, that perception of, ah, that's fake. They're, you know, they're lying to you. They're trying to hoodwink you and you're stupid for believing it. Still to this day, this far down the line is what dictates a lot of people's perception and therefore a lot of advertising dollars that WWE doesn't get because of it. Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. what Nick Khan's saying. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Yeah, you know, and I know that's not a popular opinion because, yeah. you know, a lot of, especially a lot of the younger, oh, you know, Oh, they, they, you know, they, you could do that stuff back in the day because they believed back then. They believed because the performers made sure that they could believe in the one simple concept that no matter how you do it, again, I can't, you know, it doesn't matter the moves. It doesn't matter to your point, Vince. I don't care about the quality of the show. The reason the quality of the show and that it's a joke is because they've, they've departed so far from the idea of what the real art form is, which is, Physical storytelling within the context. Here's the thing, because you know as well as I do, if you tell a story, it has to have a context. There has to be a framework. You know what I mean? There has to be a right, a wrong, an up, a down. You have to know the rules of the world that you're telling the story in. And the rules of this world that we're always telling the story in is that it is within the context of a competitive contest, period. And we that... That one single concept we have departed so far from, and that's where we come up with excuses mm. and justifications as far as your point of the quality of the show, that 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 that's how we can now, you know, that we 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 see what we see as far as performance on the screen. And yeah, you're right. You can't believe in half of it as to why it, why it's being done because it's become so absurd. It's become almost a parody of what it should be. No longer is it going out there and performing to allow somebody to believe that you're actually competing in a real wrestling match with the attempt of trying to pin your opponent. Now, you know, we use all kinds of justifications of, well, it's changed, it's different. Uh, You know, you can't just grab a hold. Those the attention span. I've heard everyone use everything to justify the, you know, the abomination that really, quite honestly, it's become. And it's all because of and directed by uh, the influence of, of, you know, a very vocal minority. And WWE and the brilliance of, of everyone wanting to turn against the very man that has brought it to the forefront and created a prominence of, w, you know, of wrestling through WWE, Vince McMahon, are demonizing, vilifying him, and wanting him to go away. And when he goes away, guess what? Things are going to change. And you're right. And you're all excited about that. And you can't wait. Ooh, get him out of there. You know, he was the problem. 
Well, he was the one thing that made that bus drive. You, you know that as well as I do, Vince. Yeah. And, uh, and when my, he goes, then then there's a good chance that the just like with, and we've talked about this too, with roller derby, that was immensely popular. You know, things, aspects about the presentation and what it was changed. Therefore, the actual art changed. And once it actually changed, it no longer existed. And there is a good chance that could happen with- Absolutely. Bro, bro, have you like- Bro, have you seen what roller derby is? I mean, there there still is such a thing as yeah, roller derby. Have you seen what roller derby is today? Yeah. And, and and remember, again, and I brought this up before, on a Friday night, and I think it was in it was in 61 or 60, I forget what the exact date is. Pat O'Connor and Buddy Rogers for the NWA world title had, I think it was 38 or 41,000 people in Kaminsky Park. The very next night on Saturday night, they had, I think it was 43 or 44,000 people in Kaminsky Park to watch the event, and that was roller derby. Yeah. I went to live roller derby events when I was oh, yeah. a kid in they New York were, Chiefs. Yeah, they were sold out. Yeah. Remember? They were sold out. Yeah. And, you know, they used to be on television. You know, they had a heavy television presence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and they were on Saturday morning with wrestling. I, I don't know if they were back-to-back, -back, but Absolutely. Hey Al, a couple of times you on during the show, you've gone into like a, a, a some type of voice or something like two mm -hmm. or three times. Are you trying to emulate Jeff? Are, is, is that supposed to be Jeff when you talk? Who's that supposed to be when you go into that voice thing? What? What, uh, what, what voice? What are you talking about? The only voice I now have is Christian Bale being Batman all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk like it twenty four hours a day. Ooh, and you know what? Like, I really, you remember back, you know, this, you'll appreciate this. Remember this when we were kids, right? And, you know, because you didn't have caller ID. I mean, you, for a lot of the audience, we had a phone that was one phone in the house that was either on a table or it was hung on a wall. And you had a really long cord that was attached to a, there you go, it was attached to that thing. You couldn't take pictures with it. You can all you could do, and, and, and there were times in certain towns you you had a what was called a party line, which was where you shared the line with you know with a couple other houses in the neighborhood, and you had if somebody was on you wanted to make a phone call, somebody was already on the other line. You had to wait until they got off, and the line was free, so you could make a phone call. Yeah, remember we used to do prank prank phone calls. Remember you call somebody up. And I was thinking, man, with this voice, if I were to call somebody up in the middle of the night and be like, I can see you. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? I bet your skin smells nice. <laughs> <laughs> Would that not be terrifying? Jeff, edit that days? out. Jeff, really, edit that out. Because somebody's going to take that out of context. Al just well, now. If, that. I, if I do it now, I mean, it just comes right up, Al Snow. And they, they, and they also can track where I'm at. Yeah. Al, somebody's going to take that one clip out of context, and Al's going to be canceled. So please take that out of the show. All right, what's, what's next, Jeff? Well, the AEW rumor mill going crazy this week. Apparently, again, this is a rumor, Warner Brothers Discovery has been told CM Punk is indeed returning. There's a rumor that this third wrestling AEW show, not the all access one and an actual third wrestling show is going to be announced soon. It's going to be on Saturday night and that they're going to have a roster split to keep the locker room separate. And then CM Punk is going to be on the Saturday show. And then the other rumor is that they are going to go to CM Punk versus Chris Jericho which is interesting after Punk's Instagram post that Jericho is a liar. Jericho had a tweet the other day where he quoted somebody with a picture of him and CM Punk where Jericho said, where they, they said Jericho will work with anybody if it's right for business. And Jericho quoted it and said, I will not work with anybody. So there's possibility they're stirring this up. Who knows? But Vince, I think you had said that for the Wembley show, they need to do Punk and, and Jericho. It's Eric Bischoff has said that Tony Khan should just cut his losses. Punk is always going to be a cancer to this locker room. What, what do you guys think they should actually do here with CM Punk? Well, first of all, I want to make it clear that, uh, you know, there's all these uh, uh, roster splits 
Uh, I just want to make it clear. Nobody needs to worry because there could never be a roster split at OVW because from what I understand, my source is nobody likes Al. So you'd have everybody on one show and you'd have Al with his notepad on the other show. So we we don't have to worry about that, Al. I want to make that clear to everybody. It'll be, you know who it'll be, Jeff? Al and EC3. That'll be one roster. The other roster will be everybody else, Al. True or false, Al? Uh, that's probably right, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so, Jeff, Jeff what is the I'm question? Sure yeah, we need Punk, man. Come on, you need Punk. Punk is a freaking no. lightning rod. Punk is controversy. Punk knows how to cut a promo. Punk knows, Punk knows how to get people talking. Cut no losses, bro. You need Punk. Go ahead, Al. From a totally 100% business perspective, okay, and I'll take I'll be the devil's advocate. All right. Um, you, we need punk. You know, we're gonna do a roster. Are they saying that li- they're literally doing the motivation for doing the roster? Split yes. So that punk can be on one show and you know, like yeah. Separate. So no, that's so the, the rumor. People, yeah, that's people, the dirt the people rumor. that don't like punk and don't get along with punk won't be on punk show. Right. That's why they're doing it. Yes. Yeah, that's a rumor. That's not been confirmed, of course, right. by anybody. Right, yeah. So now and again, now honestly, because I don't I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't care. You know what I mean? You're telling me that because this is the only motivation from a business standpoint. You're telling me that punk is drawn when he came back, drew such significant and you've got to think, put this in perspective drew such significant numbers across the board, ratings, et cetera, uh, that you need to literally go through the time and the expense and the risk business-wise of split. Well, and it's not like they don't have enough of an adequate roster to do it. I mean, for God's sakes, so they're like rabbits over there. They just keep breathing. And, but to create an entirely separate show with him heading it. Now, again, realize that for the casual audience, it's just a secondary show. And, and yeah, it just, you know, CM Punk is on it. But Al, that's, that's, that's Tony Khan. That's Tony Khan having no balls. I, you're right. That's all it is. I'm saying from a business standpoint, there, for me, there's not sufficient uh, justification to, to warrant this. He's got no balls. Well, then I... I mean, come on, hey, Al, I'll, I'll, let me make a comparison to you, okay? When we were working at the Attitude Era, CM Punk would have been Shawn Michaels, okay, bro? Like, Shawn Michaels would have been on one show and everybody else who didn't like him would have been on the other show. But yeah. but Vince ain't yeah. going to do that. No, because it, business-wise, I don't right. Sense. right. And, you know... Um, just because people don't like him or whatever, great. There were, hey, listen, a lot of people didn't like John Michaels, but everybody wanted to work with him because we knew they could draw money. Right. You know? And, um, but now you're going to go, th- you know, this isn't like, you know, Vince and the motivation that he had, you know, which he still, they completely mishandled. Uh, the brand split of, you know, Raw and SmackDown and trying to literally create, you know, uh, competition amongst himself because he, he couldn't allow each one to live independently from him. You know, they all had to be under him. If he could have allowed one to, you know, either survive and thri- or thrive without him, totally with no influence and him only influencing the other, well, then there would be, it would have been that actual real competition. It would have, would have made sense for the brand split, you know, to. If you would have did some, if you would have did some perhaps with him and Shane. Right. Type yeah. of thing. Okay. And I got, yeah, let, that's, that's let, great. Yeah. And let Shane, yeah. you know, be completely independent with that brand and let, you know, Vince be, Vince be Vince. Right. He can't, he can't do that. He has to, you know, and he, he should have, should have kept a more of a, 30,000 foot view of both brands and not been on just literally on the secondary one. He should have allowed 
an individual to be totally 100%. Yeah, e- even Al, think about this, man. Even when he did the WCW takeover yeah. gimmick, man, think about think about if Eric was in control of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah, it, it would have been phenomenal. And, true, and truly just. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, you know, overseeing and then, you know, and then and they're truly being really. Yeah. Because that allows for a total different vision, a total mm-hmm. different direction, et cetera. That motivation, I can understand. And I can, you know, granted, again, it was mishandled. And it still to this day is. Okay. <clears throat> so the brand split really is just a joke. I mean, that's all it really came down to. But as far as this, this is the most absurd, unbusinesslike decision I've ever heard. I, You know, based on what numbers we've discussed, okay? And again, that's all I'm, I'm basing this on, Right. To go through, and again, the time, the expense, the the effort of convincing television executives, et cetera, to agree to have yet another separate entity, entity of a show on another night that, you know, which for them, if it works, great. But that being your only way, your only vehicle, the, the Punk honestly didn't generate that much sufficient numbers to warrant creating this situation because this secondary show is going to be pretty much on the same level as the other one. It's, you know, and there will be no real competition between the two. Yeah. Oh, so, and, and so why are you doing it? Tony I, Khan's got no, Tony Khan's got no balls. He can't manage it. That, that literally bro, that, that, that's yeah. why he's doing it. He, but, he but, can't manage and, that. And, and again, punk and Jericho and Wembley, that's great. You know, but you know, and you're going to bring in a little more of an audience there, but you're not going to broaden the audience enough uh, to generate a need, a necessity to be in a, a in a, uh, a facility that is that size of Wembley Stadium. Yeah, I you know, agree. You're over. You know, you're going to as far we talked about the cost on one of the prior shows. You're going to have the ex, you're going to have the expense without the potential. Uh, reward, um, you know, doing the show and the potential to create the perception that you are definitely not uh, in WWE's league, WWE's league, and you certainly are not a direct competitor to WWE because yeah. you know you're going to run that Wembley Stadium, and I don't care how they shoot that thing, and you're going to see lots of lots of emptiness. You know, I hope. I mean, you know. I genuinely, sincerely hope that, God bless, what an awesome thing if they were to be able to run Wembley Stadium and sell the thing out. Great. You know what I mean? Fantastic, guys. Good for you. Because, I, you know, I don't want to see AEW go away. I, I want to, again, I want to see them not just survive. That's all they've done. They've just survived. I want to see them thrive. And that's where my... A lot of my criticism or critiques, not even criticism, just critiques of what they're doing and why they're doing it, it comes from mm-hmm. is that, you know, uh, continuing to operate in the fashion that they're continuing to operate in is going to ultimately lead to their demise. It really is. Yeah. Trying to appeal to the, the you know, that niche audience, uh, it, 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 it's a great example of, of in real time of exactly what we speak about, you know, on a regular basis, you know, they, they are literally more so than WWE, but WWE still does it too. They are literally performing for and marketing to, and, and, you know, and basing everything they do on that niche audience and that niche audience, the numbers show it's not growing. It's yeah. We'd starting to dwindle. Al, it would be like any company. Any, let, let's take Fruit of the Loom, for instance. It's the equivalent of Fruit of the Loom only selling to people already wearing Fruit of the Loom. Like, there's no company that does that. You know, Fruit Loops doesn't just concentrate on selling to the audience that eats Fruit Loops because that audience will never grow. Right, right. No, no company works this way. What about no. fruit by the foot? Since you're on the the fruit <laughs> kick there, <laughs> what do you mean fruit by the foot? Oh, yeah, fruit of the loom, fruit loops. Yeah, uh, I didn't even realize I married the two fruit loops, fruit <laughs> of the loom. Yeah. All right, uh, Jeff. I mean, we you know, quick... it, again, the the 
the, the it's such a skewed justification, mm-hmm. you know, okay, I'm running, you know, a business, you know, here's a chance to expand my business, yeah. have, yet a, you know, a separate show on another night that I can, you know, have even a greater audience or have access to uh, the same audience, but also possibly potentially again, because it's on another night to attract even more viewers, but that's not what we're doing. Yeah. What we're doing is we're trying to find a, a way to facilitate punk's return because of, you know, backstage heat. Well, okay. One, he, he, uh, and again, we're down to the numbers. One didn't generate enough of those numbers for me to want to do that Two, Well, if you've got backstage heat to the point where I got to give you a completely separate show so that I can even just have you in a ring, I can't get people to work with you. Well, if I can't get people to work with you, then what good are you? You know what I mean? You can be the greatest boxer in the world. Nobody wants to fight you. You ain't going to draw money. If yeah. You can be the greatest MMA guy in the world. If, if no one's going to fight you, you ain't going to draw money. Uh, you know, you're the greatest wrestler in the world. Oh, good for you. But you know what? None of the boys want to work with you. They don't want to put you over. They don't want to, you know, you've got that kind of heat where nobody wants to do business with you. Yeah, but isn't that on the boys? I mean, like like you, like you said, Al, yeah, yeah, but Sean was hated and everybody wanted to work with Sean because they knew they could make money. That, that That's being a pro, Al. Well, and that gets into, that it ain't about being a pro. That gets into, because these people now look at it as if it's a job, okay? The motivation for, yeah, uh, everyone did hate Sean. And, and, you know, rightfully so, you know, um, but everyone wanted to work with Sean because Sean was when one of the guys that was in the upper card and you knew you were going to, you yourself were going to make money because you were in that match and you, you know, you were going to have that run. Okay. It, you know, guys didn't like Hogan, but they wanted to work with him because they knew they were going to make more money. The problem that exists in the business today is that it's a job. Meaning, not an opportunity, it's a job. Because the, especially the guys at AEW, they have just a guaranteed contract that they show up for one or two days a week and they they basically get to play wrestler. And what I mean by that, because somebody's going to get offended, when I say play wrestler is because when you were a wrestler in the other, you know, back back in the day, your, your livelihood depended on getting that opportunity to work with the Shawn Michaels that no one liked. Your opportunity was, you know, that was your chance to make big money because you were going to have, you know, the main event matches or whatever, and people were going to have an interest, you know, and you'd get that run and you could cash out. Now, people are making so much money that whether they're at the bottom of the card, they're in the middle of the card, they're at the top, it's, you know, it's, you know, they, and they all want to, they say they all want to be at the top. You know, but if they don't make it there, I mean, they're just their egos are going to be hurt. They're going to go. It's Glacial and politics, and they're holding me back. See that voice right there. That, that was that. Je- was that Jeff saying that? That voice right there. Who who is who is that? Who is that you're doing? Like this, the boo boo fake voice. Yeah, yeah. Who is that? I've never heard Jeff speak like is that. Is that uh, uh, Mr. Pect- Pectorial? Is that, that Mr. That's, that's wrestlers in general. Whenever you they get the boo boo face. You know, is that Jesse Goddard? Are you doing Jesse Goddard there? I'm doing every wrestler that's in the locker room. Okay, that's all right. You, you got to clarify that out because yeah, people yeah. at home are asking, who, "Who's yeah. he doing?" Every wrestler that's in the locker room, they all get the boo boo face. I think it'd be better if like I beat everybody and I held all the titles and, and you know. And there's then, n- so, yeah, there's no motivation. That's what you're saying. There's no there's motivation. Not, there's not. So right. you know, it's not about you know, it, you know, you, and that's where that that heat does come into play now. Used to that heat didn't come into play. Right. But your your wallet overruled your right. you know, your your hatred. You know, and now that that's not the case. It's like, you know, you walk into a locker room and Punk's got that kind of heat and you, and guys will just go, I don't want to work with him. I, I don't feel comfortable. You know, that's the that's the doing. I, I, I don't feel comfortable. Well, that means, well, what good is what, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, you know, nobody's going to work with him. Uh, and so how am I going to have matches? How am I going to get get somebody to be willing to do the favor, let punk kind of go over on them, get up on them when they don't like him and they don't have a financial gain to let him do it so that they can 
gets more heat for a match where the people, the audience will see the payoff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're not going to think of what manner. And so you great. You're going to bring punk back. Fantastic. But you're not going to get people to be willing to, to work with him in front of an audience. You know what? Well, we're not, what we're not uh, bringing into play here and nobody has brought into play, but to me, this is very, very interesting. Listen, Al, one thing we do know about CM Punk is this man is not an idiot, and this man is a oh, businessman. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. we know, bro, Punk sat home for years and heard the CM Punk chants oh, sure, and yeah. all that shit. And then along comes a man by the name of Tony Khan, and right. Punk sees this opportunity. And, bro, let's face it. Oh, he hooked the fish and pulled him in the boat. Man. Yes, was, and wow. God <laughs> knows. God knows what that contract looks like. Oh. I swear to God, Al, I wonder how much of this is. Son, you gave this player a guaranteed contract for X amount of years, making X amount of dollars. You better make and, this. Yeah, and he's not hes not playing on the field, son. I, I guarantee you, Al, because you know, you know Punk got an ironclad contract for ridiculous money. He's yeah. getting paid, and you got Father God saying, Wait a minute, bro. This doesn't happen on the Jaguars. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah. and that's the shot. That's the spot he's in right now. Is yeah. He, and it's, it, you know, and that's the only reason that this, you know, idea of a brand split and putting the creative in a separate show would even exist. Yeah, absolutely. Daddy Khan standing there with his arms crossed going, you did what? With who? <laughs> right, exactly. On the bench, and you can't even utilize them. Or and play. then you got the people. Yeah. You, you, you got the woman there. You got his dad's right hand man there. That they're, they're telling the old man, bro. Do you know we're paying so and so x? Like you, you know what's going he's on at home, and we can't even use him because he's he. You know, he, he peop, the, the people in the locker room can't stand for him here. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Son, you better figure out something. You better figure it out now. Yep. That's Stupid. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and you're right. I mean, that's the motivation for it. And but it's not going to. It's not going to work. It's no. Gonna, no. It, what a headache. What a it, headache, bro. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why. That's why. You know, bro. You look. We look at all these wrestling companies. Al. We look at. We look at uh, Con. We look at Dixie Carter, bro. That. And you were just talking about it earlier. That is why you need a Vince. Yeah, you do. Because you, you again, we and we have said this innumerable times, and 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 people don't relate to it because they they they're not in the actual wrestling business. You know, you've got you've got your Dixie Cotters and your Tony Khans and the, and other people on other levels like Carrie Silken and you know etc. And you have a lot of people that think they because they have access to information, they have real knowledge of how to operate a wrestling business, a wrestling promotion. And again, the wrestling business is like every other business and it's like no other because it comes down to your knowing how to navigate your own product. You know, you can have a Jimmy John's franchise and you just market those sandwiches, which to me, I, I have no idea how those things succeed. But, um, you know, I'm just going to go eat cold cuts. I can do that in my kitchen. Uh, it's like a hot dog stand. Um, who goes out for hot dogs? I mean, really, uh, except for you, Vince, you're the type of guy that looks like you can take your wife to dinner at a hot dog. Jeff's got a great hot dog story, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, you don't want to hear Jeff's hot dog story. Yeah, I want to hear Jeff's hot dog. Go ahead, Jeff. T tell tell him the, the, the fabulous hot dog story you have. Go ahead, Jeff. Yes, well, several years ago, I went out to uh. Colorado stayed with Vince. Picked First time together. we met, by the way, in person, right, Se Jeff? Se second time second. we met in okay. Texas at the uh, wrestling yeah. convention. But go ahead, Jeff. Clearly stayed in my house, right? Memorable. Stayed in my house. Clearly, the first time was memorable for Vince. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he picks me up at the airport, takes me to Seven Eleven to treat me to a hot dog, Ooh. and uh, yeah, and uh, I puked it all over his car because I had uh, yeah. Yeah. altitude. Sickness yes. proceeded to puke all over my it car out. Could have been the 7 Eleven hot dog that he just purchased for you that was on a roller. 
<laughs> he couldn't even take you to a McDonald's. You took this man who all the way right. to Colorado. I've eaten many a 7 Eleven roll of hot dog in my day. Pump the brakes, Jeff. You're in Colorado. That's right. Let me take care of you. Let's swing into the 7 Eleven. Yep. For those roller hot dogs. Yep. Delicious. No wonder he threw up. Yeah. All over (laughs) my phone. What's wrong with you? That's the way you treat a guest. And now you want to hear the best part of it, Al? All the stops. I'm going to treat you like you're really. Let's Let, go. I'm going to take it eat. Oh, really? Where are we going to go? You're thinking at least even if it might possibly be Outback Steakhouse. Oh, or, God. What are you, you know, nuts? What are you, oh, crazy? Golden Corral. Al, here's the best part. No, uh, 7-Eleven. Get a, get a hot dog off the roller. Treat yeah. It's on me. On me. Al, here's the best part. I spare no expense. Al, here's the best part. He was wearing a Yankee hat, yeah. and he was catching the puke midair in his hat. That's a beautiful. You got to realize, and I didn't even realize this till after the fact. I was delirious from this altitude. Oh, I had no idea. Look it up. You know what this is now? This is Al. Oh, well, uh, I've been on the movie set, and uh, now now you're delirious. I was. It's a a legitimate side effect until I realized what I had, and then I took those. what are those pills? Motrin, yeah. Motrin. No, the um, the motion Motrin. ones. Motrin, the Dramamine or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. I was perfectly fine. That's all I needed. Well, it could have been the fact that you ate a hot dog off a roller. <laughs> all right, Al. <laughs> Easy, Al. Easy. <laughs> Al, what's going yeah, on? I, I don't know if I want to come visit you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Al, what's going out. on? We're what's gonna going to go right to 7-Eleven right off the plane and get you a hot dog. That's right. Hey, Al, what's going on uh, in your right. world over there? What's happening? I saw you making a big feature film. What else is going on? Well, I, you know, when I got to the feature film, we didn't eat at a gas station. So, you know, just, that is one upside. It's not a big budget, but it's bigger than 7-Eleven hot dogs. You know, right. you know what I'm going to you know research this week? Here's what I'm going to research for you. How many how many roller hot dogs does 7-Eleven sell in a year? I'm going to research because apparently the roller hot dog is not good enough for Al Snow because Al's about to appear in a feature film. And if anybody finds out the big movie star Al Snow is eating hot dogs off the roller from 7-Eleven, it'll just kill his image, bro. I don't want it. It'll kill my stomach. And it'll come out <laughs> like a yeah. You know, you're actually making me want one. I'm, I'm literally, I think I'm going to go get one today. Now now I got a woolly for one, man. You are disgusting. Yeah. I go ahead out. What's going on with the career, the new comic like, book, or all that? The feature film, like what's happening? Like eating a White Castle hamburger. Oh, that's the best, man. No, man oh, no. God. Please don't even tease me. Go ahead, man. <laughs> You are so gross. Don't even tease me with the White Castles, man. I would kill for a White Castles franchise here in Colorado, man. Oh, Oh. so bad. Anyway, uh, tonight, OVW is live on a Thursday night every week on Fight TV. Two hours live of OVW starts at 7 Eastern, goes to 9 o'clock. And then, um, but I know we air this on Friday. uh, And we are... Uh, regionally, we're all across the state of Kentucky. Uh, we're in about 100 million homes across the country and into Canada uh, with all of our network partners, YTA, uh, Next Level, uh, Action Channel, Game Plus, uh, both cable uh, broadcast and streaming. And if you want more inf- information on OVW, you can go to ovwrestling.com. If you're interested in becoming a professional wrestler, so that at the onset of your career, the only thing that you can afford to eat is a great hot dog off a roller at 7-Eleven. Well, um, I've got news for you. Uh, we've got a way for you to enjoy that lifestyle. And that's that you can attend OVW Academy. Um, it is the only wrestling school that is accredited by the state office of proprietary education as an actual trade school in the world, not the country, in the world. And um, you can learn all the skills you want to make all the money you need to be able to afford that roller hot dog at 7-Eleven. You can go to ovwacademy.com. I know that's a great sell for the school. (laughs) Just (laughs) that idea, that enticing hot dog rolling on those rollers. Oh, I swear to God, bro, the more you talk about it, the more you have me want one. Seriously. Bring it all greasy and delicious. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Then you get the bun out of the drawer. Who knows who, who's, who's been touching all the crusty and all that. Yes. Yeah. Then you get you get the you get the mustard out of the machine. That's that yeah. crusty, crusty golden. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, it kind of looks like dried snot on a child's nose. You yes. Know? yes. Right there, a little crusty. That's when it's at its best. Yeah. That, yeah, that's quality. That's quality. Yeah, can't see why you have intestinal problems. Um, if you are uh, interested in uh, following me on social media, where I have hilarious jokes every day, then you can go. You can follow me at the Real Al Snow on all social media platforms: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, uh, TikTok, etc. Uh, if you are uh, uh, comics, uh, I'm going to Zanies. Uh, on April 29th, I will be uh, at Zany's in Chicago. Uh, it's a 4 p.m. show. We have a 2 p.m. Uh, VIP meet and greet, and then a uh, 4 p.m. show. And then later that evening, I'll be performing in Oregon, Illinois as well. Uh, so come out and see me. Um, I am hilarious, contrary to Vince and his stupid trombone. Um, <laughs> and if you, are, you want to read uh, some really great adventures, you can get the uh, comic book, The Ballad of Al Snow and Head, or The Adventures of Al Snow and Head, which are where I team up with other wrestlers like Chavo Guerrero, uh, Mr. Protector, Jesse Goddard, Tommy Dreamer, Scotty Tuati, etc. Uh, they are true to the wrestling characters, but they're not anything to do with wrestling. Tommy and I are in a Prohibition era story. Um, Chavo and I are in an old Western, um, and... Uh, etc. So you can go to brokeniconcomics.com and check it out there. Yeah, Jeff, how how long be- before EC3 shoehorns his way into one of those comics? Oh, how, yeah. how long, bro? How long, Al? The he's next already, one? Yeah, he's already working. Of me. course he is. Of course. Oh, what about the book, Al? The book, you could, if you're uh, wanting to hear about my experiences in wrestling and uh, my career, you can go to amazon.com. It's self-help. Life lessons from the bizarre career, uh, pro, bizarre pro wrestling career of Al Snow. Um, lots of great funny stories and great advice in there. Like, hey, don't eat a hot dog off a roller at a gas station. But you know, what do I know? All right, listen. First, Al, first, go to Seven Eleven and get the sushi. I'm sure that'll be safe for you. Al, listen, Al, uh, listen. Go, go take a nap. You gotta, you gotta be on the set later, bro, for the big right. film. Gotta, yeah, yeah, go, 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 I go gotta, take a nap, Al. Gotta yes. go make a big movie star and then go celebrate 7-Eleven and get a hot dog. All right. Goodbye. I'll say goodbye. Boy, what a great host you are. Bye. I'll say goodbye. All right. <laughs> Bro, I swear I have been clinching my ass cheeks for the last 30 minutes. Jeff, I am about to shit my drawers. So wrap this up, bro, because I got I'm about to explode. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, real quick. New look ma. I have a TV show in the basement on our Patreon. We have a excellent video of Dave Meltzer and Nick Houseman on video together. Oh, magical. magical, magical, bro! Episode Patreon.com slash Russo TWC. Magical, the best episode yet, guys. Try it. I guarantee you, you'll like this. Patreon.com forward slash Russo TWC, bro. I gotta go take us. Oh my god! All right, bro. We'll see you next time.